Well, hey, hey kids, Funkman Dave here again. Uh, and I just wanted to tell you about some of the things I'm thankful for. Thankful to Jesus for. And one of those things is behind me. Yeah, Funkman Dave loves coffee. Oh yeah, gotta drink that coffee. Get? I like the caffeine hit. I know you can't tell, but I love the caffeine hit. Oh yeah. Well, I'm thankful for coffee in Melbourne where I live. Uh, I'm thankful uh, for my family. Yeah, I got a family. I'm thankful for the football. Yeah, I'm thankful for my friends. I'm thankful for my education. <laughs> you might be surprised I got an education. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, but what I'm most thankful for is Jesus. Oh yeah. And uh, in the in the Bible story today, we're going to be talking about uh, a celebration. Uh, called the Lord's Supper. Oh yeah, and it's it's where we we have the grape juice and we have the biscuit and we remember all that Jesus has done for us on the cross. 
Um, and that's something that we can always be thankful for. And we can fix our eyes on what Jesus has done for us and remember how good he is and remember that he has saved us. He has put us into his family uh, and we are under his favor, his grace, his forgiveness and his unconditional love. So there's lots of good things in this world that God, that God gives us. Uh, but we always need to remember to be thankful for the, the greatest gift of all, which is Jesus and our relationship with him. Oh yeah, I'm thankful for good music too. Gotta, I love these tunes. Oh yeah. So uh, that's it for our, for our month of thankfulness. And uh, thank you for coming on a journey with me through the Melbourne CBD. Oh yeah. Mm. See you later, kids. If Jesus threw a huge celebration or party, what do you think it would look like? Do you think it would look like this? Or would it look like this? <clears throat> or this? Jesus would eat at his celebration. Would he eat apples? Or would he eat chocolate cake? Maybe he would eat bananas. Well, I have a really, really cool story to tell you today that has something to do with celebration, which is what I was just doing. We have lots of celebrations in life that remind us of how good God is. Some things like Christmas and Easter, they both remind us and give us a time to celebrate what Jesus has done in our lives. Have you ever noticed when your parents are in big church or maybe your older brother or sister and they have a time in church where they eat some biscuits and they also drink a very small cup of red juice? Have you ever wondered what that is? Or maybe you've asked your parents what it's all about. Well... That is called communion, and it's a very special celebration. And we're gonna learn a little bit about what this whole idea is and where it came from. So communion, communion is a super cool way for us to celebrate what Jesus has done for us. It helps us to remember how thankful we are for Jesus. And I know that we've been learning a lot about thankfulness and gratitude. So let's learn about where that came from. When you look all the way back into the Old Testament and at God's story, you see the night before Jesus died on the cross, he and his really close friends, his besties, they had a special dinner called the Passover meal. I wonder if you've ever heard of that. So you might wonder, what's the Passover meal? Great question. So God's people, the Israelites, had been celebrating Passover for a very, very long time. It all began in Egypt. Now, I'm sure you've heard of what happened with the Israelites in Egypt, but I'll just remind you. So they were forced to work really hard as slaves for hundreds of years. And God sent Moses to stand up to Pharaoh, who was like the king. And he sent Moses to demand freedom for the Israelites. Over and over and over, so many times, Pharaoh promised to let God's people go. But every time, he would change his mind. And what happened? Each time Pharaoh changed his mind, God sent a plague, a terrible warning, so that Pharaoh would listen to the Israelites. But Pharaoh would not listen. 
And the tenth plague, there was so many plagues, but the tenth one was the most terrible one that happened. It was very sad. The oldest son in every family would die. I wonder if any of you guys are the oldest sons in your families. So back then, the oldest son in every family would die. But God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Each family was told that they should kill a lamb and put some of the blood as a cross on the doorframe of their house. Bit yucky, but it actually meant that the plague would pass over their house and that the oldest son wouldn't be killed. So if you're the oldest son in your house, maybe you might be lucky. So that night after that 10th plague, Pharaoh finally ordered the Israelites to leave. He'd had enough of all the misery, that of the plagues. So the Israelites, they packed up really, really quickly because they just wanted to get out of there. They had been slaves in, in Egypt for so, so long. But they packed up so quickly that they didn't have enough time for their bread to rise. Do you know that bread starts off small and it rises because of the yeast? So God told his people to celebrate the Passover meal, which is what we we're talking about earlier, to remember what he had done for them because he, he rescued them from Egypt from being a slave. So as God instructed the Israelites, every year they would begin to celebrate the Passover meal, which included eating a lamb and eating flat bread because they had to rush out of Egypt before their bread would be able to rise. Now, let's fast forward many, many, many years to when Jesus was on earth. And Jesus himself, he grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. So he would do just what the Israelites did. He would eat the lamb and, and eat the flat bread. But the night before he died, when he was with his besties, his best friends, and he was sharing the Passover, he did something a little different and he changed the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about that evening years later in his letter in the Bible. So it said, on that night, the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies. He took the bread, maybe just like this piece, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. Do this. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. Because he was about to die. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And he said, every time you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. You eat the bread and you drink the cup. And when you're doing this, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Now, you might think that's a little bit sad because obviously Jesus is going to die. But we all know what happens after that. So that's why we do this to celebrate. We celebrate that Jesus died and then he rose again to rescue us and to forgive our sins. So Jesus took an old habit of gratitude, the Passover, and he turned it into a brand new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or communion, just like we continue to do every week at church. So as we eat the bread and we drink the juice, we remember what Jesus has done for us. We remember that God made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death because Jesus lived and he died and then he came back alive again. And we celebrate communion in a way to express our gratitude or our thankfulness towards Jesus. So Jesus stopped and his followers stopped and thanked God regularly. And we can do that too. We have no reason that we can't. So let's get in the habit of being grateful. In fact, let's pray and thank God right now. So close your eyes and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for what you have done for us and you have died and you have risen, risen again so that we um, could have life and that we could be forgiven. And we are just so thankful for that. 
Lord, thank you for teaching us about communion and helping us to understand what it means. And I pray that next time that we get to take communion, that you'll help us to be really thankful. But not only that, that you help us to be thankful every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So I hope you enjoyed learning about communion. Now, next time you're in big church, or maybe when we return to your kids' church eventually, we might get to take communion and you'll all know what it means and we can be thankful and show our gratitude towards Jesus. Lord, for he is good. His faith.